Where is health insurance going to come from when you retire? That is what we're going to be talking about in today's video. If you're no longer with your employer, where's insurance going to come from? Is it a spouse? Is it, no, there's COBRA? Is it, no, I'm going to go out and get my own insurance? How do you think about it? What are your options? That is exactly what we're going to be talking about in today's video. And I am a financial planner and I help people retire early. Depending on your employer, you want to understand first and foremost, will they pay your premiums of any amount? Sometimes when you leave work, depending on where you work, of course, cities and governments have different benefits. However, it depends on really the exact company you worked for. Sometimes, surprisingly, they will still pay your premiums or maybe they will subsidize 70 or 80 percent of that. If that's an option, we certainly want to consider that. If that's not an option, well, the first thing before we look at whether going out onto the marketplace or determining COBRA or all these other things is do you have a spouse that's still working or are you guys saying, no, Ari, we've heard your videos on retirement and traveling and investing and we're going to go travel and we don't want to have to worry about work. Well, if that's the case, ignore this. However, if you do have a spouse who's still working, can you have coverage under them and take advantage of those benefits until you both retire? There tends to be a little bit of a retirement gap between when one person retires and the other spouse spouse retires, not all the time, but most of my clients don't retire together, which may surprise you. But at the end of the day, there's often a, a, either a few years or maybe even a little bit of a gap where people are not retired at the same time. Maybe one spouse has a lot of PTO and they can still travel and almost practice retirement, if you will. But make sure to at least evaluate whether or not there is that option of being covered under the spouse. The average payment out of pocket is $7,700 for a single person and $22,000 for a family when they're looking for coverage in retirement. All employers have to give you the option of COBRA, which is insurance for the next 18 months. Now, they don't have to cover the premiums, and my guess is that they're not going to for you, but please know that that is an option, so you can certainly go with that. But does that make most sense? Well, let's keep hearing these other alternatives. Going back to the spouse real quick, if you do join their plan, as opposed to going with Cobra or as opposed to going onto the marketplace, please know that that's gonna increase the overall cost, likely by not too much, and it tends to financially make most sense in a lot of cases, but at least do that, that quick calculation to understand, hey, does that make most sense? I imagine this is what you've all been waiting for, the health insurance marketplace. The health insurance marketplace is actually run by the government, if you don't already know that, which means they allow for you to go out onto the marketplace Place and buy health insurance for yourself personally, aka private insurance. Now you may be able to qualify for subsidies or tax savings depending on income and a few other factors, but that's one of the things with the health insurance marketplace that you have to at least consider. Now that's primarily if your income is between 12,000 to 50,000. My guess is that your income is much higher than that. And if that's the case, and you're still working in this scenario and you need insurance, well, it's very different than if you're not working. Because if you're not working, maybe you had a very high salary and now all of a sudden, up until Medicare begins at 65, you're going, hey, where do I get income from? Do I need to go out into the health insurance marketplace? That's what we're gonna explore more in just a moment. But please know that if you are in that range of between 12 to 50,000 or so, that there are tons of subsidies and really the ability to pay very low, sometimes almost nothing in premiums, depending on where income is at. You can visit healthcare.gov if you wanna see a calculator and really run some things on your own to determine what that cost may be exactly for you. But if it's helpful, before you go ahead and click away to that, is I have a client that I met with last week and we talked about healthcare and what makes most sense. And we determined for them that going out onto the marketplace, even if it's just a few months before Medicare begins, and yes, it was paying $700 a month, which I know sounds steep for, for insurance, at the end of the day, that was the peace of mind that gave them the most comfort. And by the way, they could have gone with their spouse's medical plan, but they were not happy with the coverage that it provided. So please know that oftentimes this health insurance, yes, it's a big consideration, but it's temporary. If you go out onto the marketplace, maybe you're retiring early. Yeah, maybe 10 years still doesn't feel too temporary, Ari. You're going, Ari, I'm paying that every single month. Listen, I get it, okay? I talk to people every single day about retiring early and what are the different nuances to that, but please know, although I know it can sometimes hurt, at the end of the day, you have the ability to have health insurance, and there are places and people who don't have that option, and so I know that already you're thinking in your head, yeah, I get it, but 
I really want to harp home on, hey, you have the ability to go out and buy health insurance and cover really that peace of mind expense of, hey, what if there's a big health incident? Or you know what, I want to be able to go do this one big thing. And here's something that this is proper protection and it's worth paying for. Now, the good news is you don't have to go through the government. There's also off insurance, which is essentially away from the health insurance marketplace. You may hear about it as off insurance or off exchange because it's off the general exchange that the market provides to buy health insurance, AKA private insurance. This is where you buy it directly from an insurance provider or directly from a broker. Now this may provide more options. Maybe you're looking at the marketplace provided by the government going, hey, I don't love these options. Great, go to a private insurance broker, go to an insurance company, and you can see those options as well. That's off exchange, but please know that sometimes those costs are a whole lot higher. Don't forget about short-term insurance. Short-term insurance can be renewed twice, so up to three years, and most people don't factor that consideration. Now the truth is the coverage often isn't the best. So please know, sometimes you'll see the word where people will say it can be kind of skimpy. I don't love the word skimpy, but it is not a bad word to describe this, which is sometimes these plans just don't provide proper coverage. At the end of the day, nothing is more important than your health. And because of that, I oftentimes don't recommend short-term insurance and it doesn't make most sense. But if you know the reality is you don't have to go through major health considerations or you have secondary insurance, well, it's worth considering. The average annual premium was $1,284 for short-term insurance. And lastly, you may even be denied coverage if pre-existing conditions exist. So it's not a great option, but it is something that you go, hey, the reality is I don't go to the doctor often and I'm not worried about this and Medicare is beginning so soon that I'd rather not pay these extra costs Let's just consider all the options. There are also things called association health plans where if you are a part of a group, well, you're gonna have access to essentially a lower price because these associations will buy a ton of policies and then you get to participate at a lower price as opposed to buying your own individual coverage. Now, what are these associations? Well, if you're in a certain phase of life or you're part of a certain group or there's some organization that you're a part of, it may offer something like this, at which case there's more advantageous pricing. The question, what it really comes down to, are you getting the coverage you need? Maybe you're part of a faith-based organization and there's health sharing options, great. Once again, we just wanna consider all options so that you can determine what is the right mix in terms of, great, this premium, great, this coverage amount, overall planning, this is what you wanna consider. Now, one of my favorites, which I wanted to save for last, is part-time work. If you are employed part-time, you oftentimes can still get full coverage at an extremely low rate. Now, the big thing here is I don't want you to drive this decision solely based off of work. If you go, Ari, I've been working so long, I can't wait to retire, maybe even retire earlier than 65, you do retire and now you go, Ari, I don't wanna go back to work just for medical benefits. Well, if that's you, I don't love that being the driving force, but if you go, Ari, the reality is I wanna do something. I don't know what I'm gonna do, and if I work X number of hours, I can get my health insurance covered? Well, it might be very attractive and I would recommend you at least consider it. Remember, employers are not required to give medical coverage, the option to part-time employees, but many of them do. It goes without saying, but the more comprehensive the insurance plan is, the more expensive the premiums are going to be. So first, as you're thinking about all of this, yes, I just explained all the different options. If you wanna retire early, do I go to the health insurance marketplace? Do I go to an off exchange? Do I have insurance coverage through a spouse? Do I get part-time income? Yes, all great options, but it's gonna completely depend on you and your health. So if you look up an article and it says, make sure never to use an off exchange, make sure that if you're gonna go and retire early, always go to the private marketplace, Great, that may have worked really well for them. It doesn't mean it's perfect for you. It's really customized to you, to your health, but really to your overall financial plan. If this video was helpful, I wanna do the same thing on Medicare. How do you think about Medicare Part B and Part D and Irma surcharges and how do you make sure you're staying below every income limit and how does that impact your tax plan and all of these things I love talking about. So if this video is helpful, please do like this video and share it with someone who you think would benefit from it. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you don't know, I am the host of the Early Retirement Podcast, and this is what I love doing. I help people create a custom strategy to retire early. You can always reach out to me or a member of our team here at Root, and we would be happy to walk you through our planning process to show you how we can help you get more life out of your money.